Okay, we're going to talk about the fundamentals of the faith. In Psalm 11, verse 3, is written, If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Now, before you think that I'm here trying to brag about my personal righteousness, <laughs> let me tell you, I haven't got any. But, but, I have the righteousness of Christ imputed unto me because I'm a believer. You see the difference? It's not me. It's Christ in me. That's one of the glorious things the Lord does when we believe in this gospel. Psalm 103. The righteousness of Christ is imputed to us. How do I know this? If I go in 2 Corinthians, in chapter 5, and I go verse 21, it tells you something extremely important. For he, that will be God the Father, has made him, that's God the Son, Christ, to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. This will be an exchange. Our sin put on Christ, his righteousness given to us. Of course, it's by grace and by grace through faith. Talking about this, the fundamentals, what do we read? The pillar and ground of the truth is not me, nor you, nor the Pope in Rome. <laughs> so we're going to check now the scripture that says, 1 Timothy 3, 15. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. But if I tarry, Apostle Paul writing to Titus, if I tarry long, thou may know how to how thou ought to behave, ought not to behave, the self in the oh man, it's jumping all over, sorry. The self in the house of God, which is the church of the living God the pillar and ground of the truth. So this is not saying when you enter the Basilica of St. Peter in Rome, watch out, you know, the way you dress, the way you walk. The, nah. the church is a body, is the body of Christ. So how do we behave in this body? Hmm. That's what it is. The church of the living God is the pillar and ground of the truth. The pillar holds firmly the ground. It's like the earth. The earth is a plane on pillars. I know that many people don't believe this, but imagine if I do care. I find always in the scriptures the verses to support what I say. The pillars of the earth. Give me a second because this is opening. Yes. The pillars. Okay. Oh. Uh, The earth. He raises up the poor out of dust and lifts up the beggar from the dung hill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and He has set the world upon them. 
Now, you know, everybody says, ah, this guy is a flood earther, run away. No. I'm a King James Bible believer. And so if in the King James I found this, I don't care at all on what so-called signs so false recall says. Okay, so given that the Lord has put the earth on pillars, the earth also in this case is a figure of this incredible situation which is the church, the body of Christ is the pillar of ground of the truth. Okay. All truth is essential and growth needs to be continuous. So we need progressive revelation. Without opening is the verses over here, first Timothy two three. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God as Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. This is so wonderful. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. So this is amazing. You come to know the Lord the way <clears throat> he operates his dealings with mankind in the various dispensations which are in the scriptures and we are in the dispensation of grace. And we learn that the will of God is to have all men saved. Question. Are all men going to be saved? Fortunately, no. Because people need to believe. Need to believe the gospel for the grace of God. And unfortunately, it seems that many believe other gospels, which are not for this dispensation, and they don't understand that we are saved by grace through faith. <clears throat> they think they need to do they say that part, Jesus did this, is now I'll do mine. <laughs> we can't put yourself on the same level of Jesus, you know, but unfortunately, some people do. So, belief is vain without sound by biblical foundations. <clears throat> See, Galatians, it tells us the, the Paul went by revelation, went up to Jerusalem, and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which are of reputation, lest by any means I should run or run in vain. In verse 21 of the same book, Galatians chapter 2, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. You see? In Galatians 4.11, I'm afraid of you, lest I bestowed upon you your labor in vain. So these people, the Galatians, after the Pope preached to them the glorious gospel of Christ, which is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes, the Jew first and also the Greek, they said to listen to false apostles, heretics, Judaizers, they were saying to them, ah, you can't be saved just by grace of faith. Huh? Come on now. You need to do the works. The law requires that you get circumcised. The law requires these rules, a regulation, blah, blah, blah. Paul says, I do not frustrate the grace of God. If you now, in this dispensation of grace, <clears throat> giving that God is offering, Dispensing grace is offering the free gift of salvation to anyone out there who believes who sinners. Ungodly sinners, enemies of God, as we all are in Adam. Given that when the gospel comes to us, it finds us as children of that wrath, children of disobedience. 
Yeah, we are dead in sins and transgressions, you know. When we receive this gospel, it's purely by grace. We are get saved. We believe it, but it's not the faith in itself. It's the gospel that saves you. The faith is the means by which we receive. Believing is not a work. Well, and Paul says, you know, through this Galatians, if, if righteousness comes by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. It wouldn't make any sense. Why in the world the Lord Jesus Christ was perfect, innocent, righteous, was God in the flesh, and to die on that cross for our sins, if it would be possible for anyone out there, including me, including you, to obtain, to reach righteousness by observing the law, then his death would be vain, and God would, wouldn't do this, such a thing. We need to understand, I know there are lots and lots of denominations. I mean, I'm really tired. <laughs> Too many even to count. You know, you go on Google and digit denominations, it comes out, you know, 300 main denominations, 40,000 um, various uh, names uh, spring from, from these 300 main. And they all, they all say it. Come with us, get baptized in water with us. You know, come in our church, pay tithes, walk in the straight and narrow, blah, blah, blah. The reality is they preach another gospel, another Jesus, another spirit. And they're putting people under the curse of the law. When in reality, you can't really do anything to save yourself. You couldn't do anything even to keep yourself safe. That's why, that's why when God saves you, He seals you with your spirit of promise which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the perishable possession unto the praise of his glory. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Essential fundamentals of the faith of Christ and in Christ is the Holy Bible, King James 1611, 1769 is the word of God. So it's preserved, inspired, infallible, pure words, the, the sword of the spirit. Definitions. You just go in Psalm 12, verse 6. It says, The words of the Lord are pure words. A silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Now you see this Psalm 12, verse 6 and verse 7. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. This is Old Testament, Psalm 12. Okay, so if I go in Psalm 12, Uh, uh, okay, Psalm 12, bear with me. If I go to verse 6 and 7 that I just read, and I want to see because I haven't tried this, but you know, I risk. I go to the ESV, the English Standard Version. Let's see what they say. The words of the Lord are pure words like silver refined in a furnace on the ground. Purify seven times. You, O oh Lord, will keep them. You will guard us from this generation forever. They changed. He says, you, you, will, guard, you will guard us. <laughs> That's not what it says here. It says... Concerning the words, thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them. What? The words, the pure words. You see all these people that have fallen trap in the trap of Satan. Look at ASV, which will be American Standard Version. I have on purpose here the time to verify the words of Jehovah. Pure words, a silver train of furnace on the earth, purified seven times. That will keep them, O Jehovah. That will preserve them from this generation forever. So at least there is coherence here. But the SV, man, <laughs> and what is this? Good News Bible. Oh, yeah. Good News Bible. 
The promises of the Lord can be trusted. <laughs> they are as genuine, genuine as silver refined seven times in the furnace. Keep us away. Oh, wow. The wicked are everywhere. They jumped. They jumped completely. Did they? Yeah. The wicked everywhere and everyone praises what is evil. Keep us always safe, O oh Lord, and preserve us for sure. Pure invention. The devil is working hard to keep people confused, and that's why he attacks the Bible. So we need to understand that we need to study the pure words of God. 2 Timothy 3.16 all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So preserve, inspired, and fallible pure words, the sword of the Spirit is Ephesians 6, 17. And take the helmets of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. We are the people of the scriptures, the holy book of but to define the word of God. 1 Thessalonians 2, 13, For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you receive the word of God, which you heard of us, Paul and Timothy, how many are there? I need to be, I want to be correct. I don't know. 1 Thessalonians At the beginning, I know who is there. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus. <clears throat> Paul and Silvanus and I came to think it's just like in parallel, you got Peter, James, and John <clears throat> for the gospel and dispensation of the kingdom. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus will be the three apostles for the dispensation of grace, for the gospel of grace, or the gospel of Christ. That's why it says, for this cause also we thank God without ceasing, because when ye receive the word of God which ye heard of us, Paul, Silvanus, and Timotheus, you receive not as the word of man, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually works also in you that believe. Very good. Let's go next. These are fundamentals of the faith. These are fundamentals. These are pillars. This, I mean, you got to have foundation. Foundations. It's like you build a house. If you build a house with the wrong, fragile, not established, established foundation, what's going to happen? At the first movement of the earth, which is continually moving, not the spinning, it's the earth is alive, it's got you know, all these movements, the house will just you know, collapse. The fact, for example, that Jesus Christ is true man and true God, so we're going to see incarnation and the God death. In Colossians 2, 9, for in him, that's Christ, dwells all the fullness of the God that bodily. All right. Do you know that, <laughs> do you know that this verse, I will get there. God that, Godhead is present three times because it's the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. In John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word. You see, with a capital W, that's Christ before incarnation. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God, three times here, you know. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made, it was made. Just go in Genesis. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the, the, the water. So you got God the Father, then the Holy Spirit moving, and then it said, and God said, that's the word. You see the three in one straight away. John 10, 30, Jesus said, I and my Father are one. You know the Jews? They freaked out really heavy. Yeah, I kill him, you know, he's telling, he's saying that he's God. They understand. And, and now all these groups, this sex, I don't know if Jesus was really God. He never said, he did, he did. 
Uh, I'm not nice when I make fun. I'm gonna make fun even more. <laughs> First Timothy 3.16 And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. You see? So Jesus Christ is not only a wonderful man, prophet, high priest of Israel, the Messiah, the anointed, the king. It's God manifest, was God manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, <clears throat> believed on in the world, received up into glory, where he is now, the right hand of the Father. First Timothy 2 5 says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Without the mediator, nothing really happens. Do you know, do you understand that without Jesus Christ, God couldn't even save you? Neither the Holy Ghost. You need the Savior because Christ does the work of atonement. He dies on that cross, he sheds his blood, pure blood of God, to atone for my sins, your sins, and the sins of everybody. John 5, 7, for there are three that bear record in heaven. You see, the Father, you see, capital F, the Word, capital W, and the Holy Ghost, H, G, capital, and these three are one. Now, now what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go on purpose and see what's happening with First John 5, 7 in other versions. American Standard Version, let's see if they got... If they got John, First John 5, I don't know if they kept it. 6. Oh, wow. Am I right here? They eliminated this verse. Oh, well, this is jumpy. Wait a second. Wait a second here. Come on now. Let's do the things. First John 5 7. First John 5 7. Second. Yeah. Oh wow. You see? Okay, let's go back to the King James. It says First John 5 7. It says For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Let's see the ESV, the English Standard Version. Wow, they jumped, they, for that three, they, they testify. Jumps completely. Do you understand? If you go around with this perverted Bibles, let's see what this is, the Good News Bible. Jumped. They just eliminated the verse. For the, there are three. There are three witnesses. And it, it goes to verse eight. So jumps the fact that the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost in this three are one. There is an attack on the scriptures. That is not a joke. Let's see if Giovanni Diodati in Italian. Yeah, you see, because Giovanni Diodati, the Italian version, is the translation in Italian of that period of the King James Bible. In fact, a dear friend, he kept it perché tre sono quelli che testimoniano nel cielo. Il Padre e la parola e lo Spirito Santo, questi tre sono una stessa cosa. This is 5 7 in English. There are three that are testify in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are. One. Hmm. I mean, I got the Serbian, but because my wife is Serbian, but I can't read Serbian here. <laughs> my dear friends, you have to be very careful. Don't use versions which are corrupt, because you're going to give an account to God. Because anyone who touches the word of God, in my understanding, is a real crime. He says all the time, don't, don't add, don't detract, stay with. And that's what people do. They think that they treat this book like Mickey Mouse magazine, you know, Mickey Mouse. 
Now said before, I repeat, the Godhead is present three times. Acts 17, 29, Romans 1, 20, Colossians 2, 9. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Let's go to the next slide. This is very important too. The virgin birth to Jesus, God manifests in the flesh, was prophesied and is fulfilled. Was prophesied in Genesis 3.15, Isaiah 7.14 is fulfilled, as you can see, Luke 1.27, Matthew 1.23. I can't read everything. I get really tired. God manifests in the flesh. He put on humanity. 1 John 3.16, John 1.14. He did, on, did not have an earthly father. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things who were spoken of him. Now, you know that this, and there's another verse, I, I need to go, Luke 2.33. Luke 2.33. That's the Gospel of Luke. Where, chapter 2, verse 33. And Joseph, he doesn't say the father, and his mother marveled at these things which were spoken of him. Now let's see what the American Standard Version. And his father. And his mother. So they want to make you believe that Joseph was the son of Jesus. Evil. That's really evil. The American Standard Version. Oh yeah, American. <laughs> let's see the English Standard Version of this verse. And his father and his mother marvel at what was said about him. Let's see the Good News Bible. The child's father and mother were amazed at the things Simon said about him. <sighs> what do you see, the Italian? And Giuseppe, Joseph, and the mother, and the mother, Mary, they were wondering. He's faithful because I told you. But the King James Bible tells very clearly, and Joseph and his mother marvel not with things which were spoken of him. If you don't see that there is an attack on the scriptures to keep you blind and saved of following another Jesus, another spirit, another gospel, I, I don't know what to do. You see it together with me now. It wasn't the likeness of man, Philippians 2, 6, 8. It goes from 2, 5 to 2, 8. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross. Philippians 2, 5. Let's go there and see what happens with the other Bible. From verse 5. Let this man be in you, who being in the form of, of God. Let's see. I made myself no reputation. I know that the here also they go terrible. Who exists in the form of God can't know the being or on equality with God, the thing to be grasped, but emptied himself. Where do you read emptied himself? Taking the form of a servant. Where do you read that? This is called kenosis. Emptied himself. These are all the devil's Bible. The King James is very clear. Being in the form of God, though no robbery to be equal will, but made himself no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. He didn't empty himself of anything. Do you know that, unfortunately, sadly, also among Midax, right dividers, great believer, people that say, Oh man, you know, we're full on King James, we are 100%. There are people that preach this. This 
kenosis, this fact that Jesus Christ emptied himself. No, he didn't. He humbled himself, yes, but he didn't empty himself. I don't know what to say anymore. Yeah, let's go next. Yeah, the likeness of man. I think I've been there already. Okay, now a very important doctrine here. We find the one fundamental of the faith, the sub substitutionary. Okay, substitute, atonement. So we are here we go in Romans 5:11. Not only so, but we also join God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we are now received the atonement. Israel will receive in the future. The Israel God, not all Israel, because not all Israel will believe. When it says all Israel, all Israel will be saved, the Israel God. God is always thinking about his children, those who believe. Those who don't believe, they don't belong. I don't know if I explain myself. I got one son and three daughters. Huh? I know that my son and my three daughters. I love all people, okay? Because of Christ, not because of myself. There are lots of people there, young people, you know. I mean, my son, for example, is 40 plus, you know. If another, another son or somebody comes to me and says, Dad, I say, Who are you? <laughs> it's not my son. It's the same with God. You can't go to God and say, Hey, I'm your son. I say, Who are you? If you haven't believed and received the gospel, the grace of God, you don't belong. You have because the Spirit of God didn't seal you. And Romans 8, 18, if I remember where it says, Now, if any man have, has not the Spirit of Christ, it's none of his. The seal of God is the Spirit of Christ that comes in you after you believe the gospel, the grace of God. No, what a Baptist, no, la la la, you know, these people, the tongues, I was in that kind of stuff for many years, for four decades, in my ignorance. No. Romans 4.25 says, We were delivered for offenses, it was raised again for our justification. 1 Corinthians 15, 1, 2, and 3. He gives you the gospel that saves you, which is the gospel of the cross. Let's go to death, burial, resurrection. We are saved by grace through faith without the law and works. Even the righteousness of God, Romans 3, 22, 23. <sighs> For even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sin and come short to the glory of God, being justified freely. I don't know, can you be more clear than that? By His grace, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, the atonement you received. But to him that works not, but believes on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Ephesians 2 4. But God was rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we dead, we were dead in sins. This was our condition before salvation. As quicken us together with Christ. And he tells you straight away, by grace he has saved. I preach this in, in all my videos, biblical videos. And has raised up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us, so Christ Jesus. I read fast, but hey, this is very, 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 very holy, holy, holy material, because this is the operation of God to say the good for nothing like me and you, <laughs> because as sinners, we're really not good, you know. And we're all sinners in Adam. And you can't take yourself out of Adam. You need the operation of God when you believe this gospel takes place. Not before. Ah, for by grace are ye saved. No getting saved. No, you have been saved. You know, on the probation now. You are saved now through faith. The faith is to take the, the gift. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Many people think it's the faith. I believe it's the free gift, the gift of God, because I found three, free gift three times in the book of Romans. Ephesians 2 9, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. 
The resurrection power of Christ, John 11, 25. This is another fundamental. Jesus said unto her, I am the seven I am of Christ, the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet he shall live. Shall he live? Now, of course, this was the gospel of the name to the little frog when Jesus was sent by only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, as he said in Matthew 15. Um, 28 Ma Matthew 14 28 I began too old <laughs> I got to check Matthew 15 I think I'm wrong here yeah 14 14 1524. 1524. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. He answered, said, I am not sent bound to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So, in this situation here, he's talking to his people, to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Acts 4:33. With great power gave the apostle witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Romans 1 4 and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. 1 Corinthians 15 21 For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. It's very hot. Today is 37 or something like that, and very tired. Other essential doctrines we are built upon the fundamentals without them Christianity is weak and unstable preservation of the Bible he wants us to use it and creation of miracles creation miracles Christode the creation holiness sanctification right division prophecy mystery yeah okay holiness and Prayer, God's intervention, dealing with non believers, begin with yourself, be equipped. Make sure you protect against the attacks. Philippians 3:15, Titus 2, 8. The servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle, teaching all the doctrine, ability to exhort and convince. Okay. Okay. I think we are at the end. Yes. What is very, very, very important is exactly this. We are saved. And now that we say we can serve the Lord, we can serve the Lord as ambassadors for Christ. You understand? Ambassadors for Christ. Ministers of reconciliation with the world of reconciliation. So make sure you say, I'm your son, you see? <laughs> Just joking a little bit. <clears throat> make sure you say, and sealed by grace, believing, having believed, they received the glorious gospel of the cross. The power of God unto salvation. Paul says in Romans 1.16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. To Jew first and also for the Greek, so you don't need water baptism, confession of sins, going to church, praying tithes, uh, confessing sins. You don't need anything. You need to simply believe what Christ has done to save you. As you believe, he saves you and seals you. Grace and peace, Lord. Thank you for listening.